that's, that's what I thought. And it's so good to be in the house with you. If you got your Bibles, open up to the book of Mark, chapter 5. We're going to get there in just a second. Let me uh, welcome everybody joining us online. Drop us a little note. Let us know where you're tuning in from. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rich. I'm the lead pastor here at LifePoint. It's an incredible privilege to be able to stop and break, right, from the week and just regroup. This is how we start our week, right? And um, it's, it's good because it's kind of like the ending and the beginning at the same time. That's how you're supposed to do it. But guess what? This isn't the only time that you get to hang out with Jesus. He's available all the time. So get yourself a, a plan, right? And if you, don't, if you don't designate some time, your time will go away. If you don't have a plan for your time, your time will go away, right? This is why people who are, who are now retired say, I need to retire from retiring, because there's just something always coming up, right? It's like, yo, I didn't know I was going to be this busy in my retirement. If you don't have a plan for your money, your money will go away quickly, right? You should have a plan. You should have a plan in your spiritual walk with Christ. And uh, one of the ways that you can do that is get involved in a connect group and just, just jump in. We want to be there with you, walking with you. Hey, today's Pentecost Sunday, 2024. That's crazy, isn't it? Right? 50 days after Easter. Years. Almost gone. You say, oh, so we still got half. Yeah, well, that half went fast, didn't it? I mean, it went really, really quick. And so guess what? The second half is going to be probably a little bit longer because it's so hot outside, right? What is going on? I don't know. I didn't do it, uh, but I'm, I'm here for it, right? I'm not going anywhere. It's going to be an exciting time. And uh, Pentecost Sunday is interesting, right? No matter where you fall on the, the spectrum of Christianity or you know, what denomination you came from, it's important. It's not just traditional. I want to make sure we understand that. I want to break it down for you a little bit, and then we're going to get to chapter 5 in Mark in just a second. But some people call it the church's birthday. It is, has some tradition tied to it, but the fact is most people just don't understand much about it at all. Some of you grew up in a Pentecostal environment, maybe a hyper-Pentecostal environment, and so you carry some baggage from that. Anybody like that in there? A few of you. I grew up in a hyper-Pentecostal environment, and it took me a long time to un unpack some of that stuff, but what we don't want to do is just throw out everything that we don't understand just because something weird happened from somebody. You've heard me say it a thousand times in here, the Holy Spirit is not weird. People are weird. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is just fine. He's perfect. Right? People are weird. They, they, they blow up things and do crazy things, and that's it. But I don't know about you. I've said this a bunch of times in here as well. I want everything that God has for me. I want it all. I mean all of it. Not some of it, not a portion of it. Come on, we can give it up for that. I want it all. All of it, right? And, you know, when we read Scripture, there's so much available, and people are like, well, I like this, and I don't like that, and... You know, when we go back to the original day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, what we find is we find 120 people who listened to Jesus. And I find it interesting, and I'm not saying there was only 120 people in the upper, there were only 120 people in the upper room, but I'm not saying that's the only people who believed Jesus was who he said he was, but we find 120 people there. It's interesting because Jesus had fed thousands of people. He had traveled all around. He had ministered. He had healed the sick. He had raised the dead. Lazarus was raised from the dead, right? Everywhere, people touching his robe, getting healed, all kinds of crazy stuff, but 120 people listened to him when he said, go to Jerusalem, 120. That's a pretty small percentage overall of people who will listen. The question is, will you listen to him? If you listen to him, he will tell you how to live. He will guide you and direct you. And he even said at one point to his disciples in John 14, 15, 16, he says, I'm going to leave, but it's going to be better for you because I'm sending an advocate, one who will walk alongside you, the paracletos, the God who will walk alongside you. He'll, he'll do a lot of things. One of the things is he'll convict the world of its sin. He's going to show you what's right, what's wrong. He will help you. He will give you clarity. He'll give you vision. He'll do all these things that we need to get better, Right? But in the, in, in the book of Acts, one of the things that hangs people up is that when they were all gathered, they were all there waiting, they were all just, just praying and saying, God, we're here for you, we're waiting, we're, do, we're, we're waiting on you. And he showed up and the Holy Spirit was dispensed. And one of the things it says is that they spoke in tongues. And, and for some of you, you're like, that's so weird. And like you, I'm like, you, you, you read all the way through the Old Testament? Like Elijah went to heaven in a chariot of fire. Jonah was in the belly of a whale. Joshua marched around a city seven times, six times, on the seventh day, blew a trumpet, the walls came down. 
But tongues, that's just too, that's too far out. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? This is how people, like, you, you let people get in your head instead of reading Scripture. And I'm not saying you have to do this. We, we get to do the things of God, right? If you will be patient, you will let him fill you and baptize you and indwell in you and live in you, right? Then we get to do all of these things. I... Again, I grew up in a crazy Pentecostal environment. If you, want to, if you want to trade stories of church, I can match them. There's probably only one, of, probably only Pat Williams can match me in here. <laughs> She's probably got more than I got. But oh, like we've seen some stuff. I mean, I've seen legitimate holy rollers. Legitimate, not just a, a term. I've seen them, right? But, but what I had to, and I'm giving you the tr- transparency in my own missteps in ministry. As a young minister, I was... I was like, I didn't know how to navigate that because I want God to enca- I want I want people to encounter God, but I was like, oh, don't act weird. Because I'm fishing, <laughs> right? And those moments are deep, right? And I, I, I encourage you to explore the deep waters with the Lord. Explore them. Right? He's not taking you out there to drown you. He's taking you out there to fill you. And if you'll understand that. Right, you'll be just better off in your life, right? And so I used to say, oh, man, I said, oh, I'm a, you know, what's going to happen in here? And now I just like if things are out of order, then we'll, we'll call that. Just so you know, like if you get out of order in here, I'll tell you you're out of order. I'm okay with that. Um, but we do want you to encounter and get everything that God has for you. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's working. He's the third person of the Trinity. He's working for you. He's not against you. Again, we're not talking about denominations. We're talking about living a spirit-led life. Galatians talks a lot about it. This is what it looks like if you live for the world. It looks crazy. It's bonkers, right? This is what the spirit-led life looks like, the spirit-filling life. It produces fruit, and that's what God wants for you. So I don't know how you classify yourself. Um, that's, that's not important to me. What's important to me is that you get everything. I'm repeating myself, everything that God has for you. Everything. If you're high thought, wonderful. Have high thought and study and show yourself approved and experience everything God has for you. If you're low thought and you're all experienced and you just like to jump around and don't like to think about it a lot, (laughs) learn some, study to show yourself approved and get everything that God has for you. This is God's plan for your life, that you would walk full of power, full of wisdom, and that you would tell the whole world how good he's been to you. Amen? Amen? You guys awake? All right, let's get after it. Today, uh, Pentecost is a great reminder of God's promise, that promise that I am with you always. That's such a great promise, and God is with us, and I love it. And we, we left off a couple weeks ago in chapter 4, and Jesus was in the boat, right? He was in the boat with the disciples. He was very calm. In fact, he was asleep. He was chilling. He was good. Riding the waves of life. Uh, the storm comes up. The waves are crashing in. The disciples are freaking out. And they're like, who's going to wake him up? Somebody wake him up. Well, somebody wakes him up and he jumps up and he speaks to the wind and the waves. And they're instantaneously calm. And they say, who, who is this guy? Who is this guy? That, I mean, they had traveled with him already. They already seen a bunch of stuff. But still, like... Who speaks to the wind and the waves and it stops? This is wild, right? And so they understand this and they were a little afraid of it all. And and even though I don't think they understood or could fully comprehend the significance of his authority, right, they did absorb some of it. I want to tell you today that the story we're going to jump into is so much about hope. Uh, life is about getting to Jesus, who is the hope of the world. He's an anchor for your soul. And maybe something's holding you back today. Maybe you came into this room and you were, you were bound up by addiction, substance abuse, some broken relationship, pornography, whatever it is. I believe that God wants to set you free today. You know, I, I believe that. And if he sets you free, then you are, today's title of the message, free to tell, tell everybody about it. Mark chapter 5, verse 1, it says, they came to the other side of the sea, the country of Gerasene. Jesus went uh, with his disciples to the east side of the lake, the Sea of Galilee, into this this region, really like a tin kind of city or a tin little area uh, come together. And it says, when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
out of the tombs. <laughs> That's got to be pretty weird, right? I mean, the guy's hanging around in a cemetery, essentially. That's pretty bizarre. Um, I don't like cemeteries, not just because I have to go there often. I was in one just the other day. I think Friday or Thursday we were there doing a funeral. It's, it's challenging. It brings grief. But beyond that, people just, they get all freaked out by, by dead bodies. And it's, it's challenging. But this guy apparently was living there. It tells us in just a minute. But he, he had an unclean spirit. This is key that we understand this today. He lived in the tombs. He had something that was over him. They was pressing him down that he couldn't break loose. Verse 3 says he lived in the tombs or among the tombs. And no one could bind him anymore. Not even... With a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. This is a legitimate crazy person. Like, legitimate crazy. We still restrain people in society, yes, if, if people are trying to hurt themselves or they're trying to hurt others. Occasionally, they will lock them down. They will tie them down sometimes with leather straps or they'll handcuff them. Or occasionally in jails, they'll put them in a chair and, and put, like, a, a bag so they won't spit on people. This is this kind of maniacal behavior. But it says here that no one, no one had the strength to su subdue him. And apparently they had at some point in time said, this guy is a danger to himself. He's a danger to society. We must chain him up. They chained him up and he broke loose from the chains. So I don't, I don't know how he got this way. Just like I don't know how you got chained up to yourself. I don't know what steps you do. I don't know if it was like a little bit of this and a little bit of this or a little bit of this or a whole lot of it came on or he just started praying to the. I don't know what happened to him. But it says in verse 5 that night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. Night and day. Beyond the spiritual attack of this, did you know that if you are struggling with anxiety and frustration and chaos in your mind, one of the worst possible things that can happen to you is you have a sleepless night. It just begins like exponential, right? And then the next night you're more anxious and you can't sleep. And the next thing you're like three, four nights you can't sleep. And you, you literally are losing your mind at sleeplessness and chaos and anxiety and depression. And, and you just get to a point like, I don't want to do this anymore. And maybe some of you came in this room this morning with that kind of tension, with that kind of feeling. You said, like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm just about to give up. It says that he was always crying out, just screaming out, probably just wild, just wild and cutting himself with stones. This is sad for me. Like, this is still a problem in society. I'm not picking on you if you're in this room today. And you have a problem with cutting. I'm saying this to you. If, if, if you're cutting yourself, listen to this. That is the enemy trying to harm your physical body, which was made in the image of God. It helps nothing. And so here's what I would like to say. If you have that problem here, I would like to talk with you after church. I would like to pray with you. I would like to see God just set that thing free from you. Like, you don't have to live like that. You don't have to live with that kind of torment in your life. That is not from God. But he was tortured, and this, this behavior shows that he was overrun by demons. And we'll see that. And you, you, maybe you're thinking, man, what a, what a sad case. How did this guy get this way? I, again, I don't know. But he was. Again, I don't know how you got to the point that you were in. But let me say something very clearly because we think well, I mean, this is a very clear picture of a guy who is under Satan's control. It's a very clear picture. We see him. He's under Satan's control. Let me say something to you today. Maybe yours is less subtle, but if you have not made Jesus Lord of your life, you are also under his control. That's harsh. We say it a thousand times, right? Everybody wants a Savior. Not everybody wants a Lord, right? The Lord runs the show. You don't get, to, you don't get oh, I, I want to do this today. I want to do No, I am, I am going at the leading of the Holy Spirit. I can't do it myself. I know what that looks like. And so I have to have him leading. And I'm not, one thing I'm not going to do is live under Satan's grip. 
live in his control. And I don't want you to either. And this is why we talk about these things, right? This guy's being tormented. He's, he's just, just all running. Listen, if, you, if you're saying, hey, the, the devil might have a little, a little bit of toehold in, in my life. Listen, he's, he's running the show if he has a little bit of toehold, right? And, and, and pretty soon, you'll end up like this guy. Maybe you won't be running around naked in the, in the cemetery, but you'll have so much chaos in your mind because the devil is a cruel Lord. He's a cruel Lord. What, a, what, a, what, what God wants for you is the complete opposite of what the devil wants for you. It says in verse 6, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. So you should get this instantaneous encounter. Jesus steps on this guy, comes running to him, drops to his knees. Now, if you'll flash back to uh, Good Friday, we talked about the guards placing that, that purple robe on Jesus. It was false worship. This is actually the word here used in the original language that they actually were falling down. They weren't really worshiping, but there was, it's the same word for worship. What they were saying is, we recognize that your power is greater than us. Like we have power. We've been running the show around here. But then you showed up. Oh, like mm, you, you have it. We don't have it. And so we, they bowed before him. It's significant that, he fall, uh, that this guy falls down. And I think there's some humanity there. But I think the greater side of this is spiritual. And it says in verse 7 that, that crying out. Remember he's crying out all the time. But he cries out again with a loud voice and says, What have you to do with me, Jesus? And he calls him by name. Son of the most high God, I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He's crying out with this loud voice. He calls him by name and he calls him son of the most high God, which, which would have been used all over the place for those who said, hey, again, we have some power or our little G God seemed to have some power, but that's the most high capital G God, right? That is, that is bigger than we, that's the most high God. And when you live on purpose, filled with the spirit, walking in obedience, right, people start recognizing, oh, like, you don't deserve a God. You serve the most high God. And that's how it's supposed to do. When people look at your life, they're supposed to go like, wow, what is going on there? Not that your life is perfect. You don't have problems. No, that you are being led by the king of kings and the Lord of lords. This is what's supposed to happen. Now, maybe the man perhaps was so out of sorts, so demon-possessed that he couldn't control himself. Maybe he was tossed down by the demons. But maybe there was some humanity involved in there. The demon said, I adjure you by God, big G, do not torment me. You know what he was afraid of? Eternal damnation. That's what the demons are afraid of. And so they live in the, in the moment in people's lives, just trying to get a little bit of control and getting their, their thrills off of that. It's Literally the opposite. Now, I've talked about this many times, and I'll talk about it many, many times from here on out also. But how many of you said, hear people say that Christianity is so restrictive? Anybody? Right? Christianity is boring. Christianity is no fun. Um, if you hear people saying that, they don't know anything about it. They literally don't know anything about it. I feel like my life is one of the most exciting lives. Let me say this, the things I do are boringly consistent, but my life is exciting, right? I go to bed early, right? This is why I've never been robbed in Homestead. <laughs> if you got held up at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, why weren't you in bed? <laughs> go to bed at 9 o'clock, you'll probably be just fine. That's my guess, I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Go to bed, people. Go to bed. It's the natural way. Get up when the sun comes up and go to bed when it goes down. <laughs> like, I'm not tired. That's because you got up at 3. <laughs> if you get up early in the morning, you'll be tired at night. That's just how it goes. But when you, when you, when you live like this, you understand, like, I'm, God wants you to not, he's not saying come live in restriction. The Bible doesn't say that. It says whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So why is it that everybody that doesn't know about God, right, or doesn't know him, better yet, talks about Christianity being restrictive? 
because that's exactly it, because they don't know. And it's okay, I think, to say things. Why would you talk about something you know nothing about? Like, I'm, I'm very aware of the things I know nothing about, right? But I'm also aware of the things that I've experienced in my life, and I experience freedom, and I've walked in freedom, and I live in freedom. And guess what? He wants to, you to live in freedom. Don't listen to the people who tell you, oh, it's so restrictive. Just say, listen, you don't know anything what you're talking about. You can't, you, you, you're not an authority on that subject. Verse 8 says this, he was saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. So Jesus is already dealing with this. Come out of him. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he replied, there's two pronouns used here. My name is Legion, for we are many. These demons were controlling this guy. Very, very intense oppression that this guy was living under. I was talking with a young man from our youth group. I'm so proud of Souls Youth. They're doing such a great job. Pastor Mike, all the team. Vince is playing guitar up here today. He's got the coolest hair in church. Uh, <laughs> but Vince said, isn't that interesting? He asked me what today's message was about. He always wants to have theological discussions with me, which is cool. I don't mind that at all. Um, but he said, isn't it interesting that this is like a foreshadow of what's happening today where you listen to people who are dealing with transgender issues talk about the plurality of what's inside of them? Scary, right? I've, I've, I've watched this. Some of you have seen these videos where this person will say, um, my pronouns are they and them, and then literally say, I am legion. Now, I would say to this, I don't think that every one of those is the demon speaking. I think some of those people are mocking church and mocking God. I think that's what's happening. Either way, the person is desperately lost and needs a divine, a divine appointment with God to set him free. This is, this, again, this is not the plan of the enemy that would be confusing and, and just, we don't, like, we don't know what's going on. This, this is the plan of the enemy. It's not the plan of God. This is the absolute plan of the enemy. And we see this. He says, the, the demon says, my name is Legion. So apparently he's like the head demon of all these other demons that are in there. And some of you are like, ah, oh, this is a lot. I don't want to talk about demons. Well, you better talk about them. The Bible's talking about them. Here's what I know. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. Tin tells us that he, he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. So the demon is the leading or the lead guy, the head demon, right, leads it and said, hey, don't, don't send us out of the area, right? I just want to, like, let us just do something here, right? I know that tension of this can be scary for those of you who don't understand the power that's inside of you. Somebody just said over here, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, right? So we have this power, we have this access, and, and yet people still come to me and they're like, oh, I just feel like something's weird in my house. Can you come pray? I'm like, you pray. Oh, you think I got like some special juice or something? I got the oil of gladness and a super soaker. I'm like, just hosing down your house or something? Like, just pray over your house. Like, just do it. Like, just let, her, let the demons have it. Start accessing the name of Jesus like you actually believe that he's inside of you. Right? So, 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 so I know some of you are like, feel like I'm so nonchalant when you come up there. Like, I just feel like something's weird in my house. I'm like, really? <laughs> Did you do anything about it? <laughs> and they're like, I'm looking at you to do something about it. I'm like, I'm not doing anything about it. Like, I'll pray from over here, but just... God, just, just believe. Like, if he's Lord of your life, then the devil has no access to your life. Period. 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 I don't care how strong demons think they are. They always bow at the name of Jesus. They have to. So the demon doesn't want to get cast out. He doesn't want to have to, like, live in the eternal, you know, torment and, you know, frustration of being without God. And so he says, hey, can we do something else? And verse 11 says, now there was a great herd of pigs that was feeding there on the hillside. All right? This would have been an area of Gentiles. The Jews didn't really deal with pigs, but the Gentiles did. And they begged him. This is the demons begging Jesus, send us to the pigs. Let us enter them. 
I told, I told the group this morning, I almost named this message Deviled Ham, but I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, that's old church jokes. I chickened out. I chickened out. Let us into the pigs. Let us do something there. He says, listen to this, this is powerful, verse 13. So he gave them permission. They can't do anything unless God says so. They can't do anything unless God says so. We start like, you, can, you need to tell yourself that. If you, they can't do anything unless God says so. And I know people get hung up. You hear me talk a lot about cause and allow. Did God cause this or did he allow it? The truth is, it doesn't even matter. We don't even focus on it. Wherever you're at is where you're at. Let God help you to get out of it. You know, if you got, if you got something in your life that's troubling you, if you've got a, a bad diagnosis, hey, let's pray for it and believe. Our job is to believe. It's God's job to fix things. But we, we look at this. So he, so he gave them permission. All right, get in the pigs. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs and the herd, numbering about 2,000. That's a lot of pigs. And he rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. I was reading about this. Did you know pigs can swim? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty wild. So they actually had to run into the sea and drown themselves. Right? This is wild, wild behavior. So he just gives them the permission. Sure, go into the pigs. Go down there. They run down the thing and they drown themselves. All this, can you imagine the chaos? And there's people around, right? Because 14 says the herdsmen, the ones who had the pigs, it says they fled and told in the city and in the country, and the people came to see what was, what, what, what happened. Well, this, is, this is wild behavior. One, you got Johnny Crazy Person who's over here in the tombs running around without any clothes on, can't be chained, can't be monitored, nobody can subdue him. He just lives out there in the cemetery, right? That's one. And now he's been totally set free, right, according to the herdsmen. And they're telling. Can you imagine them telling a story? And then Jesus casts the demons out of the man. They jump into 2,000 pigs. The pigs run down the mountain and drown themselves in the water. People are like, i got to see this for myself. <laughs> i got to check this out. This is amazing, right? This is wild. So it says they, they came to Jesus and they saw the demon possessed man, the one, uh, and, and I read that and I went, hmm, because what they saw wasn't a demon-possessed man. What they saw was a former, formerly demon-possessed man, right? The one who had the legion sitting there, he's clothed, and he's in his right mind. I was thinking about our lives how when we don't live with Jesus, it's just chaotic. It's total chaos, right? And then we come to Jesus and he, he says, I'm just going to dispense peace onto your life. Some of you come in this place and you love this place because it's the only place that you feel peace throughout the week. And, and that's, that's fine. It's a house of peace. I want you to experience that all the time, though. Like all the time. But when, you, when you're sitting there I think this, this idea of clothing, I was just thinking about this just right now. I didn't even say this in the first service. When you start clothing yourselves in righteousness, like clothed in righteousness, like the peace comes. Be holy as I am holy. Do righteous things. Be holy. Right? And all of a sudden, like we start walking in obedience and it's like the world slows down. There's a pulse like in the chaos. You know what I mean? Bam, 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 bam. That's not just the club music. That's like, <laughs> that's like the, the world. It's just, it's just chaotic. It's just pounding. It's just like, okay, all right. Every, everything. And then I'm going to clothe my, myself with the things of God. I'm going to pick up the, and put on the things of God, the armor of God. And pray. And I'm not worried about anything. I don't have any, I'm not anxious about anything. I just give it to the Lord in prayer, right? And everything. And just giving it over to Him. And, and, and peace is coming up on me because there's clothing of righteousness. And we're sitting there. And, and I'm dialed in with Jesus. That is my right mind. That is my right mind. And it says that as the people witnessed this, the last part there says, they were afraid. I was thinking all week long, like, why were they afraid? 
I think we're afraid for a lot of reasons. But to see somebody so completely transformed when you are not is very problematic for your spirit. It's like, I should, what happened to him? Like, I, I, why don't I have that? But I also think there's the, the economic tension of like, we just lost 2,000 pigs. How's that gonna affect society? Like, you just, you're like, man, it's like, this Jesus, he's, he's over here just stirring stuff up. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. 16 says, and those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs, and they begin to beg Jesus to depart from the region. That's crazy. Listen, let me tell you something. No matter how much things change in your life, listen, listen, listen this carefully. Sometimes when you go toward Jesus, I'm not the one who tells you, like, if you just come to Jesus, everything's going to be fine. Every, it's going to be it's going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to have some challenges. Get ready for a battle. This is why the scripture tells you to armor up every single day because it's a battle. It's not against the, the people of Homestead or against me or against each other. It's against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. It's a battle, right? But when, when, you, when, you, when you do this, right, when you, when you let this thing happen, right, it's the way. You say, like, if, if that's what you have for me in this season, God, cool. Okay, I don't want to do this anymore. This is why when people encounter troubles, when, not everybody, but one of the, the first things some people do, quit coming to church. That's literally the last thing that you should quit, quit doing. Well, I'm just having some trouble, so I just quit. What? It's essentially saying the same thing. You, Jesus, like, that cost me, that hit me in the pocket about 2,000 pigs. But what are we going to do with that? Let me tell you something. Don't ever ask Jesus to leave. Don't ever leave Jesus, because he's never leaving. It says he was getting into the boat. The man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. He might be with him, right? This is the juxtaposition of, of, of a man who just encountered everything. Total freedom, total liberty, totally set free. And what does he do? He's, he's clinging to Jesus. He's like, I can't, I can't afford to be away from him. Can I just go with you? Will you let me in a boat? Can I just stay with you? I want to stay with you. I need to stay with you, Jesus, right? And the other people are like, you go away. Go, Jesus. Why are you messing up everything? Why are you changing everything? This guy knows. This is the difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus. Some of you, some of you are afraid of the commitment. You're afraid that he's going to change too much. Okay, you can change some things, but I really like this thing. I was like, can, can I just keep this? No. What if he says no? What if he changes too much? What if he asks you to leave? I pick on this sometimes because I had to go through this in my life. We do missions projects. We had built a church in DR and building a, a, an early childhood development center in Rwanda, Africa right now. And that's you guys are faithful giving we're able to do stuff like that it's amazing we're helping people giving them jesus you know but what if god said i want you to move to africa you know he does that stuff sometimes <laughs> right alex okay like he'll call you he called me i was at youth camp i was supposed to be praying for the kids i was praying for myself that's the truth got my hand on my own forehead touch him lord Give him clarity. God said, you're, you're going overseas. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. I didn't know what it takes to move all the way around the world. I didn't know what it took to move to China. So I'm fumbling around with it. It took a while to get sorted out, but I actually sold all my stuff and moved to China. People thought I was crazy. I thought I was crazy. Start praying for myself some more. What are you doing? Are you doing the right thing? Jeez. Bless him, Lord. I want you to understand how important it is that, le that last phrase in 18, that he might be with him. Now we talk about this so much. It's just, it's just, it's just be with him. Just stand with me real quick. I got to burn through these next few verses. 
You know, when Jesus called the disciples, right? It takes me back to the, the previous chapters. And he calls, calls them, he's calling the 12. And, you know, and he's, you know what he calls them for, right? He calls that they might, in verse 14 in, in chapter 3, he says that he, he appointed the 12 to be named apostles so that they might be with him. It might be with him, right? And then what? That he might send them out to preach. It might be with him and then send them out to preach. So jump to 19 now. So he did not permit him, right? The man wanted to come in the boat with him. Can I just go with you, Jesus? He said, he did not permit him. But he said, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Go home. Go home. You're free to tell. You're free to tell. You know, sometimes people tell you, like, I got a secret for you, but you can't tell anybody. You promise not to tell anybody? <laughs> no. You're free to tell. You're free to tell. And it says he went away, and he began to proclaim in the Decapolis, which is like this tin, tin area is coming together, how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone marveled. Everyone marveled at what Jesus had done for him. Why? Because they knew him. They knew he was absolutely crazy. They'd seen him. Like, bro, I'm so glad you got clothes on. <laughs> That's a win. He's like, listen, the clothes is the, the last of it. <laughs> like, Jesus touched my heart. Like, he changed everything in me. I was literally living in, in the tombs. What does Ephesians say? It says you were dead in your trespasses, dead in your sins. You formerly walked according to the ways of this world. Now you don't do that anymore. That's what he was saying. The story's about hope. It's always about hope. It's always about hope. Listen, I'm going to tell you three things. Like, maybe some of you have been living in chaos. That's the devil. It's not God's plan for you. But listen to this. There's three things that need to happen. First thing is you need to be set free by the power of God. Set free. Come on, you can, you can clap for the power of God. <laughs> clap like you actually believe it. Set free by the power of God. I can't set you free. You notice he didn't try to reason with this guy. Like he let him, he let the demons like say, hey, don't, can we just go in the pigs? Okay, I'll, I'll give you permission to go in the pigs. But he, he, like it's dealing with, with power, right? Second thing is you need to live in a new peace. Some of you don't have peace in your life. That's because you haven't surrendered to the lordship of Jesus. If you'll surrender to the lordship of Jesus and accept what he has for you, understand that he is for your good. All right, that he is for you, not against you, right? And so then you start living in a new peace. It's like, oh, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Just, a, just like this guy, when they showed up, he was sitting down with clothes on. All right? The last thing is this. You need to continue to overcome. Overcoming is not a, like a one-time thing, like I overcame, cool. No, you need to continue to overcome. And how do we overcome? Revelation 12, 11 says this, what? We overcome by the what? Blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. That's why he told him, he said, go home and tell. You're free to tell. And in your telling, you will experience a special liberty. And no longer will your life be boring and restricted. When the sun sets free, it's free indeed. Would you bow your heads with me? I'm just going to go right at it. Nobody's looking around in this place. If you came into this room with any kind of anxiety, any kind of addiction, drugs, alcohol, pornography, if you feel like there's been any kind of chain holding you back from following Jesus completely today, you to slip up your hand. Come on, you're not alone. Nobody's looking around. Hold on just for a second. This is you saying, God, I need help. I can't fix this thing by myself. It's messy. I, I keep trying to break loose, but it just keeps grabbing me. It keeps holding me back. You can put them down. 
Father, in the name of Jesus. The only name under heaven by which we are saved. We just declare in this house of freedom. Listen, declare it over your own lives. Say, Father, I need help. I need you to break the chains in my life today. Holy Spirit, I just need you to break it loose right now. It's been too much for me for too long. I'm tired of fighting it myself. Can you just fight it, Lord? Holy Spirit, do your work. Break us loose today. And fill us with peace. A new peace. A new hope. A new strength. A new life. God, we receive a new blueprint for our life. The, the devil had a plan, but that's gone. We tear it up. And we just live in the new blueprint. God, we build our lives on you. Jesus. Thank you for starting a work. We know you're faithful to complete it on the day of your return. We believe in our hearts. Confess with our mouth that you are Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving us. Run the show. Holy Spirit, lead convict where necessary direct guide strengthen fill us with hope we surrender we surrender it all and we receive the commission to go and tell freely tell everybody about your wondrous works how you've changed everything for good in my life I'm so thankful that you're not done. We want more. We want more of you, Jesus. We want more of you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. We pray all of this in the wonderful, powerful, almighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Can we put our hands together, church? Praise God. I bless you guys. Listen, we got a lot going on in our world. Hang on tight. Parents, parents, your children. Don't just let them look at everything, man. The devil's a liar. He's trying to get in and worm his way in. Don't let him do that. You are the protector. He's the ultimate protector, but you protect your household. The way you need to change some habits in your house, but Jesus right there. Bang, it's a foundation. Hey, I love you guys. Nobody told you that. If you need prayer, we want to pray with you. Find somebody here. Don't do life alone. That's not how God wants it to be done. Let's pray our benediction together. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you guys.